What's up? It's Matt Plapp. Sean Walchef. We are here with Owned There. Phones. I can't hold my phone up because it's, it's recording. streaming on TikTok Live. So this is episode one. So I guess let's talk about the concept here. So I'll start it off and let you lean let's into it. it. The idea of us working together came up a couple months ago. You said, hey, Matt, you guys are doing some pretty badass stuff, which I know on the digital marketing world. And you see that we're doing some unique things with regards to how we acquire data and use it. That was a gap in your world. Yep. And so as I'm thinking about this, one of the things that excited me was I've got what I call 50 blue ocean strategies that I believe if restaurants were to put them in place over the couple year period, they would have no choice but to increase their, their sales would increase is what I'm trying right. to say. Because if you're in this person, you're in this device, yep. if you're in the person's newsfeed on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, all those things on a consistent basis, assuming you have a good product, good service, and you're good people, your business will prosper. And so when you came to me and said, hey, what do you think about working together? I thought, man, this is a gold mine because too many restaurants we currently work with, the only blue ocean strategies they practice are the starter ones that we put in place. Getting them to get on camera, getting them to create content is tough. And so you're a great fit. And then my dad had been talking, my 75-year-old dad had been talking about the importance of restaurants being in their customers' phones every day. Yes. And to me, the I, my idea came up, own their phones. So let's chronicle the journey of us working together yep. to see the, there's going to be good, there's going to be bad, there's going to be cool, there's going to be not so cool. But then there's also, for me, the chance to look at the other platforms that you use your digital stack, like Ovation, like Toast, uh, Seven Shifts, to see how they all tie together. So that's my perspective on what the podcast is going to be about, our journey. What about you? Yeah, so, I mean, for me... I own a barbecue media company and every time I say that I get laughed at, yep. but we are a barbecue brand that's done over $30 million in sales over 14 years in San Diego on the West coast. That's a lot so, of barbecue. Selling a lot of barbecue, but we struggled like hell when we opened in 2008 and we didn't know what we were doing for five years, learned how to run a profitable independent barbecue restaurant. And by doing that, we also had to figure out no one was going to come tell our story. I thought I was going to build a great business, a great barbecue, great hospitality, give back to the community. And all of a sudden, all these people were going to come and write about our business, come and put us on local news, put us on radio, all these legacy media things. That never happened. No. But our greatest curse became our greatest blessing because it forced us to lean into storytelling, to lean into social, to lean into Facebook, Instagram, Yelp, TikTok, LinkedIn, you name it. We have gone and figured out, I have to be uncomfortable. I have to be willing to share our story. And that's how we started this media side of our business, launching our first podcast in 2017, um, where I was podcasting with one of my best friends who owns a butcher shop. Me and him, we got together and we said, why don't we do a podcast above the butcher shop, interview local business owners, talk about the stuff that they don't teach you in business school, and start to go deep. And what we realized was that was less about barbecue and much more about business, yep. much more about marketing, much more about media, much more about storytelling, much more about personal development. And it took me down this rabbit hole of podcasting, this podcasting journey, and becoming a media company, Barbecue Media. Literally, if CaliBBQ.media, yep. our URL is CaliBBQ.media. And like I said, I've been getting laughed at for the last five years, for the last three years, but now we're getting asked to go speak at national trade shows. We're we seeing have, the vision. We have a podcast with Entrepreneur called Restaurant Influencers, Entrepreneur and Yelp. Yep. Toast, our primary technology partner, is the title sponsor of that show. Pop Menu just came on as a secondary sponsor nice. to that show. So we've got a lot of really cool things that are happening because we were willing to be uncomfortable. Part of what I've realized during that build out of our barbecue side of our business and the media side of our business is I was really neglecting the marketing side of our business. And the marketing side, finding people like you because of content, because of storytelling, having you come to our restaurant, podcast with me, having you on my show, I realized like, dude, I really love what America's Best Restaurants are doing. I love what Matt is talking about. I love how they're active with email lists, with text lists, with Facebook marketing, with all the things that we believe in, but I don't have the bandwidth. My team doesn't have the bandwidth to execute our master smokehouse, our ghost kitchen locations as we build our, our brand. I need help. You know, and it's like, I preach on our podcast, stay curious, get involved, ask for help. That's what my grandfather taught me. Okay. And I need to do what I, I preach, and that's ask for help. Lean into the experts, the people that are doing, playing the game within the game. You and your team are playing the game within the game. Why not come and say, let's Cali Barbecue be a case study. Yep. 
if you if all the things that you say are true, then you coming on and us sharing all this data, yep. all this how to own your phone, how to capture content, how to actually cultivate these people that love our brand. We have people that already love our brand, 25,000 followers on Facebook. Why are we not taking care of those people? Why aren't we not offering them? Why aren't we doing the things that you talk about? And what if we do? And what if we share that? Yep. Let's share that. Let's be that case study so that more restaurant owners go, hey, maybe I should be a, rest a client of America's Best Restaurant. That's so, how we got, that's how you got a San Diego kid there we go. all the way out to Florence, Kentucky. <laughs> and I think one thing, the two that's important in this is one of the things I, I like doing, I like seeing people in face to face. And I don't know how many people you've had call you for marketing and advertising. <laughs> Lots. And then a lot, and you've probably never met many of them. Yeah. And that's one thing in our business that we've, I'm striving to make our business different. I started our company in 2008 teaching businesses. One of our first restaurants or clients was a restaurant, how to use Facebook. Yep. And then unfortunately, because they all knew I had an expertise in radio and TV and marketing, I got sucked into helping them buy other media. And then we eventually came full circle where 2015, it's like, okay, we're going nationwide. We're going to restaurants. We're going to help people dominate the digital spectrum for their business. And there's some other elements to that. But other than that, also, we had a two-year period where we, we were stuck behind a desk. Mm -hmm. 2015 to 2017, I was in my house. I always joke, like, most marketers are in their mom's basements working. <laughs> I was in my house, in my home office, never went out. 2017, you know what? Screw it. We're going on the road. I need to be in front of the Shans. I need yep. to be in front of the people around the country. And we've been to thousands of restaurants, and we're building a model now with our media side, where we've got 10 people and two Mercedes vans that travel the country, and meet restaurants one to one because I think that's important. But a couple things within here that got my attention that you said. Number one, we're downstairs this morning doing the seminar. Yep. A young lady walked up at a restaurant, and she was talking about they're like I think they opened December of last year. Yep. And she said, you know, it's wild. The local newspaper, she's a small community, Hillsborough, Ohio. Mm -hmm. The local newspaper hasn't approached us to do anything, but they approached recently this place that just broke ground. Yeah. And one thing I like about that is that when things don't happen, they force you to take actions you wouldn't normally take. So a buddy of mine was telling me one time, because we had a couple companies come to us recently about uh, capital. They yep. wanted to be part of the business. And right now it's 100% Matt Plapp and it's 100% Matt's money and win, lose, or draw, it's me. Yep. And I looked at it and a friend of mine said, here's the curse sometimes of capital. When you have too much of it, you get lazy and do the wrong things. When you don't have it, you get real creative. And I think of the same way with attention. Yep. When your restaurant doesn't have the attention, if you don't have the radio stations, the TV stations, you don't have all this buzz, you're not raising canes that somehow opens up with a billion people in line for chicken tenders. Yep. Yeah, they've done something right there. If you're the place down the street that opens up with no fanfare, it forces you to get creative. And to me, getting creative in 2022 is on this damn phone. Correct. I always like to say, and it's, a, it's a, you know, a question we all know the answer to, and the people we ask know the answer. What does it cost to go live on TikTok like you are on the phone right now under the cameras? What does it cost to go live on Facebook to do anything yep. on, I don't know, is there a paid social media platform I don't know about? I have not seen it. So there's probably, if I had to, if I had to put it on paper, there's probably 20 places potentially yep. a business can be. And what I love about that was when I started my career in 99 selling radio advertising, I bought a book on Adobe Page Mill and how to build websites. And we built OutdoorConsignments.com, which was an idea side hustle me and my dad and brother had to sell boats and campers on consignment on the internet Yes. in 99, which is funny because I still, I look back on, I'm like, I'm not that smart. And then eventually that grew into a $15 million three location business. Yep. And we dominated the internet on accident. But back then there wasn't real, there wasn't anywhere close what there is now. Email was there. Texting was like, you text somebody back in like, oh, two, like they're going to come to your house with a baseball bat. You know, if it even existed with most phones, you know, Facebook didn't exist. I think MySpace came around like 2004 or five. Yep. I got a really funny story about MySpace. We got to tell this because it'll be funny. <laughs> uh, we'd use chat rooms. And I, so for me, I look back and I was telling you earlier, I want to show you a picture of the vehicles we had. We had two wrapped Hummers. We had wrapped trailers that we took to fishing tournaments because I saw, hey, Every week, of, every day of the week, there's bass Hold fishing. Hold on, you had two wrapped Hummers? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
I'll show you a picture of one. We'll pop it one up the page. Somehow it's, it's not surprising at all. Oh, it's I've always nice. been like, get in your face and look at me because that's what it, marketing is. But it I, is what I saw, is. so we bought the boat dealership, and this is kind of a sidebar on that, but it talks about it. We bought the boat dealership. Me and my dad and brother weren't fish because we had built it from 99 to 03 on our own. Yep. And then we had a chance to acquire this $700,000 a year boat deal. Actually, they were doing 400 grand a year boats. We bought them. We weren't fishermen. My dad thinks he's a fisherman. He's not. He, none of us are. But about six months in, I started hearing people talking about these fishing tournaments. I'm like, what the hell is a fishing tournament? And they're like, oh, we go down the Tanner's Creek Tuesday nights. There's about 40 of us. We show up, and we put our boats in the water. We get fish. We come out. Whoever has the most fish wins. And I said, okay, well, I want to sponsor these. So I started giving gift cards. Yep. And we gave $30,000 in gift cards a year after we started doing that. But then I said, you know what? There's nobody on site with these things. My employees are already here fishing in it. Hey, Gary, well, if I pay your entry fee, will you pull the trailer and the Hummer and have the stage, yep. the backdrop of that picture of the person winning, be the Plaps Pro Outdoors trailer? Yeah. So that blossomed and took our company at a big level. And I say that because that was the free marketing then. Correct. That's really all there was. Now, if I'm a restaurant and I'm not doing video content, picture pictures, emails, text. If I'm not doing birthdays, we have a client of ours that took my advice. And we're going to get into this later on. This will be a podcast down the road with you. But he started calling people at our at our behest and at our coaching the week of their birthday. Yep. Because in our program, the people get a message at a certain time. I think it's like seven days for their birthday. An email, a text, and then retarget on ads to say, hey, it's your birthday. Happy birthday. Here's something cool for your birthday. And I'm like, dude, call him. Hey, what's up? It's Sean, Cali BBQ. Just want to call and say happy birthday. No consumer's gotten that phone call from a restaurant. And so the goal is to how do we dominate that attention that is there for the taking? And so to me, when that restaurant tells me I'm not getting that attention from my local newspaper, I think that's the best thing that ever happened to her because now it's going to force her yep. to take action on all these mediums that are out there. Yeah, I mean, it, for me, it, it couldn't be more exciting. I mean, I feel like it was, it was meant to be that we're supposed to be doing this show, this third podcast yep. for – me, third podcast for you. Um, and it's a show. It's an internet show. So we're not only going to do audio, we're going to do video, we're going to do words, and we're going to do images. Everything. Audio, video, words, and images. And when you get down to it, what we talk about today, what we talked about yesterday to business owners, what I, I speak about, you speak about is business owners, entrepreneurs, anybody that's watching this show, you own your own business. Like Even if you're in sales, even if you're in marketing, even if you're an engineer, the only person responsible for your story is you. Yep. You literally have the greatest tool that's ever been given to a business owner. That iPhone or that Android phone that you have in your pocket, you can reach a global audience. Anybody that cares about whatever you care about, if you start telling the story of what you care about, you can literally create a community. You can start what we call the digital flash mob. Yep. What happens with the digital flash mob? You're a crazy person. Starts with one person, Once right? you start with that video, somebody is going to say something. Your friend, your significant other, your fa your kids. They go, Dad, who do you think you are? Why do you think you're dancing on, the, on TikTok? No, I'm not dancing on TikTok. I'm talking about media. I'm talking about storytelling. I'm talking about barbecue. I'm talking about restaurant business. I'm talking about the chargers. I'm talking about things that I care about and I love. And I'm just doing it the same way that I check email every day. Yep. The same way I check email every day, the same way I'm posting content every day. It's awesome. And so what we're going to cover in your journey with us and what I hope to learn from you as well is we have an acronym that goes along with our brand, America's Best Restaurants, ABR. Yep. You know, Grant Cardone's got 10X. My goal is for ABR to be as well known as 10X in the restaurant space for independent operators in the next 10 years. It's attract, build, retain. The number one goal of your restaurant's attention, any business's goal, is to attract attention. Yep. How do I get somebody to look at me? Me? I drive a stupid orange Lamborghini. I have wrapped <laughs> vehicles. I have orange shoes. I have orange shirts. I do a lot of things that get people to look at me. At some yeah. point, the right person's going to look and go, I like that guy. I need what he's doing. Yep. So restaurant-wise, your goal is to attract the attention of people who should be eating at your place or already are and impact them more often. The next step to that, which I think is the biggest failure in all of marketing, and I stumbled upon this back in the late 90s. I used a program called ACT. Every single business I interacted with, I loaded them in the act. It was like a salesperson CRM. Yep. When I lost my marketing agency in 2008, when the economy crashed and our boat dealership went goodbye, when I launched the agency, I went to my act database. I still had it. 
And I had a friend of mine go, man, how did you go from like nothing to six figures with your agency? I said, well, number one, I had a name. People knew who I was. We had a lot of publicity from our digital marketing experience in the 2000s. Shit people aren't doing now <laughs> back in like 04. And so people knew me. But also I had my database of the people who did business with me in radio. They already know, like, and trust me. Yep. If I'm trying to get somebody to pay me to do something I'm good at to help them, I'm going to reach out to them first. So I did, and my business blew up. Well, when you market your business, if you buy advertising consistently, if you see the response from a direct mail piece, from a newspaper ad, from they even, is newspaper still printed? <laughs> I don't, I, I, my, my, cousin, I, my cousin who I'm staying with in Cincinnati showed me a newspaper, and he showed me how small it was, like three pages wow, of his printing. Okay, so, but he still gets it. So if somebody it. happens to buy an ad in that newspaper <laughs> and their advertisement works, the biggest failure to me is they have to go back and rebuy it. Yes. You know, I sold radio advertising. What I hated, and what we're going to show in, the, in episode two of this, is some results early with your stuff. But what I hated in 1999, 2000, 2001, 2003, when I would go to a you know restaurant, Ferrari's Little Italy was a client of mine, the Bassanos, Madeira. Mama Bassano's lasagna is legit. Their bakery is legit. When I would go to them and say, hey, your radio commercials ran this many times the last month. Mm -hmm. I couldn't tell them anything. Correct. Supposedly people heard it. But what I also couldn't do is tell them that it led to a specific action. So for me, awareness on the front end should always lead to the B, which is building, building the database. Because the biggest atrocity in all of marketing is the number of businesses that do not have the contact information of the people who already hand them money. Yep. And people go, oh, I, I don't I want to get my customer's information. What are you, stupid? Like, I want Matt Plapp's phone number. I want Matt Plapp's birthday. I want Matt Plapp's email. I use the example of Wall Titching Post, my favorite restaurant down the street. It's about two fifty every time me and my wife and kids go there. It's a great steak, great ribs, great atmosphere, really loving, lovingly environment. They don't have my info. I go four times a year. It's a grand. If they had my contact info and occasionally got me to interact with them somewhere, I might go more often. By the way, they had a billboard at the Cincinnati Reds game the other night. So here they are. Spending, if I had to guess, fifty to seventy-five thousand dollars a year to be in, which what ESPN had an article today on the potential for the Reds to be the worst Major League Baseball team in the history this season. Different topic, but they're spending sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars a year to have a lame-ass billboard in a stadium yep. versus taking the effort inside their restaurant to find out Matt Plapp's info. Because if they get, they walked up and said, "Matt, we appreciate you coming here." I want to give you a free steak for your birthday. When is your birthday, brother? It's May 17th. Do me a favor. Scan this QR code. It's going to ask you a couple questions. A month before your birthday, we're going to send you something badass. You're fit. You like steaks, right? I oh, love free steaks. Hell yeah. I'm not going to say no. Yep. I'm not going to be offended you asked for my data. I'm going to give you all my data. And then what's going to happen over the next 12 months before when my birthday comes up from then or whenever it is, is I'm going to occasionally hear from you on email and text, different reasons. Maybe a Sunday night at 4 o'clock. Matt, four spots open tonight. Click here to make a reservation. Now, all of a sudden, Matt Plapp goes from four visits to 12 visits. Yeah. Just say I go from four to eight. That's $1,000 more in revenue. Your only incremental cost in that $1,000 increase on Matt Plapp spending is your food cost and the marketing. So if your food cost is 30%, that means $700. If you got 200 bucks in marketing to get Matt Plapp, which is a lot just for one person, it's 500 mm -hmm. I would argue there's probably a thousand Matt Plaps out there for every restaurant. Yep. That there's a hundred grand in net profit waiting to be put in your business to pay your people better, to take your wife to Bulgaria more often, that are there if you do it. And so that's the B. And then the last part leads off that's retention. The only reason people don't go back to businesses more often is they forget. I mean, shit, how many advertisements you hit with a day? Oh, I'm, it, hundreds of thousands. Yeah. Hundreds of thousands of pieces of content. Yeah. Like the micro content that we consume on a daily basis. It's unbelievable. I mean, right now I'm sitting here looking at you. You got toast. You got toast there. I'm, I can look around the studio and probably see advertisements. If I get on my yep. phone, I'm going to look at stuff. Consumers are hit with a lot of content. And it's a matter of you sticking out. I did a video a couple months ago. I don't know if I told you about this. On how my car affected my eating at Barley Corns. I tell you the story? No. Barley Corns is a, a wing place down the street. Wings, family restaurant, been around since the 70s. My dad had them insured in the early 80s. That's how I've been eating there my whole life. Okay. We ate there during the pandemic on average twice a week to support the Heil family. That was why I ate there because yep. I knew the owners. I liked the, I love the food. I'm going to make sure they get my business versus McDonald's. Even though McDonald's, yes, has a local operator probably. I don't know them. Correct. 
but I have that affiliation with Barley Corns. Well, Barley Corns, my house is here, and Barley Corns is here, my office is here, my gym's here. When I drive my Infinity, I drive up that road. It's US 42 in Florence, and Union, the Erlanger base. I drive up it. When I do it, I drive by Barley Corns back and forth. And so many nights, driving by it, call home, Christy, what for dinner? My wife and I don't cook. Like ribs we had last night are the first time I've cooked in six months, besides Pop Tarts. Ribs that were reposted by Big Green Egg, by the way. With Cali barbecue sauce on them. That is true. So we don't cook much. And so I call home. We want dinner. Let's go to Barley Corns. Because I just drove by it. Barley Corns, cool. We're sitting at Christmas last year. My daughter comes home from college. Let's go to Barley Corns. I haven't been there. with some Doc Style wings. Great. Great blue cheese, too. So we go there. We get food. And we're sitting there. And my wife goes, we haven't been here in a couple months. You know, yeah, you're right. We haven't. Why? She goes, your dumbass car. What do you mean? She goes, you've been driving the Lambo a lot lately. And what it was was in October, I had heard of somebody speak about what motivates you. Like for yeah. me, having the Lambo, part of me thinks I don't deserve it, that I financially shouldn't have it. But the other part of me is like, this is, I have to have it so that I can put my foot on the gas and go with my own brand. But also it's good marketing. Yeah. And so I made a decision most of October, November, December to drive the Lambo all the time. Quit driving the Infinity. Well, when I drive the Lambo, I don't get on 42. I get on 42 and I get off Mount Zion and go up 75 because there's less stoplights, less potholes, and you can go on the expressway and go really fast for two exits. <laughs> yep. True story. There's a YouTube video on the whole thing. But what happened was in two months, I quit driving by Barley Corns. So my, one of my favorite restaurants, I have zero service issues, zero pricing issues. I have zero reasons not to go there except for the fact that I wasn't reminded. Their only reminder was their sign. Now, if they didn't suck at Facebook, if they did great email, if they had a text program, if they had my birthday, like my birthday's next week, I haven't gotten anything from most of the restaurants I know I can trust in this area because they don't have my birthday. Yeah. And so when I look at that, I'm like, their, their failure to retain my attention was because they didn't have my data. By not having my data, they can't get my attention again. It's a big circle, big circle there. Yeah. And so that's what I hope to accomplish with you is, you guys do a lot of amazing stuff that will, if we feed people into your social media channels and feed people into the algorithm by getting them to engage with what we do and getting their data, they'll have no choice but to, to be retained. Yeah, I mean, that's the, it's the most exciting part because when you start to look at the stuff that we're going to share, you know, these customers that have supported us, they've supported my family, they've supported my staff, they've supported our village, you know, they've supported this ecosystem in Spring Valley that is now in Barrio Logan and soon to be San Diego State, but they've given to us and we've given back to them. And there's this reciprocal village relationship, but if you don't have a dynamic CRM system, which is really what, when I I'm just made a video with my general manager on simplifying your restaurant tech stack okay. and understanding what's a restaurant tech stack, well, it's really not a stack. <laughs> you know, it's more of a maze. Yeah. And understanding that- That you graphic know, you made is cool. Correct. So the understanding that we have all these incredible partners like Toast, who's our primary technology partner, but we also have Seven Chefs. We also have Ovation. We also have Marquee. Like we understand how important this stuff is, but then at the heart of it is the people that are supporting our brand. Yep. The people that have paid money in our restaurant, the people that celebrate life's moments, all the birthdays, all the weddings, all the funerals that come and they choose us to come and celebrate those things. We need to just do the basics and then amplify those basics with the gasoline yep. that you are going to add to us. Yep. Because literally now we're talking about special sauce. Now when we're opening up ghost kitchen locations and we're targeting people that are in a zip code that love barbecue, now we're getting a new customer, but then we're retaining that customer because there's DoorDash, Uber Eats, yep. Grubhub. I mean, the, once you start building all this technology, this data is everywhere, but where's the heartbeat of it? The heartbeat has to be in control of the brand. And by having America's Best Restaurant, by sharing what we're doing, we're gonna hopefully help a lot of other restaurant owners understand how important it is. Yep. Because it's just numbers. Yeah, it is. And for us, if we're a case study, we have nothing to hide. You know, there's a lot of things that we do really well. We're very loud about those. There's things that we don't do well, which we're also loud about as well. All it is is here it is. How can we learn from it? How can we be, be better? And how can we go to our technology partners and say, hey, you, you've got all these uh, phone numbers, Ovation, Zach Oates, who's listening to this, Zach, hey, how do we get those to Matt and his team? How do we make sure that the, those numbers that we got from Toast are also going to, because we need all of them. If we don't have all of them, then what are we doing? Think about if Disney World had just a big circle road around it and had all these roads that stopped 50 feet short of hitting the circle. Yeah. 
It's the same with your business. I, I used the analogy you liked the other day. I said, I got the Ohio River right here. Yep. And I got to go from Kentucky to Cincinnati. I have to go across one of four or five bridges. Imagine if they built those bridges halfway and went, oh, shit, let's do another one down there, and then stopped and went down here. Yep. Stop. Well, that's and stopped and went down here. Next thing you got five half-built bridges, people are falling in the water. Well, when I look at that, that's the oblivion of marketing is that people are coming in through toast. That's great. There's some data there just sitting there. Some people are coming in through Uber Eats. Some people are coming in through seven shifts. Some people are coming in through Ovation, through Open Table. What was one you said, Marquee? A Marquee. What is Marquee? So Marquee, they take the 82 places, which is just a minimum of 82 places that are places like TripAdvisor, yep. the Tesla map, Apple maps, Google maps, all these places where your menu can be found. Oh, so literally you don't own it, but you have to claim the profile. But yep. Even for someone like me, I can't claim 82 different profiles. And update. Marquee goes in and gives us one dashboard that allows us to aggregate. So if we change our hours of operation, we change our menu, we change our photos, they will push it to all yep. of these other places. So here's, here's, and this is the stuff I love. So one, one of the problems we had in our business, full, you know, full disclosure, was that three or four years ago, we were looked at like, oh, I've got Ovation, I don't need you guys. Oh, I've got toast. I don't need you guys. And we were looked at like as a software. And I'm yep. like, well, no, we're a strategy behind software. Correct. And we were thick headed in that, Hey, you've got to use our strategy. You got to use our software. Cause we have our own software within a software, as you can call it. Well, this past 24 months, we, you know, getting more conversations with clients and saying, Hey, I'm not going to lie. I think my team is the smartest opportunity you have to market better. Yep. We have a team of 40 plus that work exclusively with restaurants. Like you're doing Facebook ads. If you were doing Facebook ads for Cali BBQ, you'd be doing a couple ads a month for one brand. Yep. Like Ashley and Deb on our on that team on my company are doing ten thousand a month. The, yep. the 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 ideas they have, the the efficiencies are unbelievable. And you know they get they got the failure a long time ago. They know how to win. And so what we looked at with our brand was we said, okay, how can we help our customers that are using these other things? They don't have to just use our stuff. Let's find a way that. The build team has now become the tech team, is what we call it. Yep. I can't change the ABR to ATR because then I'd have to change the damn name of the company. So the ABR team, attract, build, retain, we have an attraction team, we have a build team, we have a retain team. Well, under the retain team is also a division we call the tech team. And the reason is that is that over the first three months of the relationship with a client is to say, because we can't do it all the first day, yep. what else is there? How do we do database reactivation? We had a restaurant recently that had 18,783 email addresses in a CSV sheet, in a CSV sheet just sitting there, dust on. He's like, Matt, we don't know how to use it. Uh, we don't know how to use it. We know it's there. We're kind of scared to use it. Did the people really opt in? How can we reactivate these people? And we said, we've got that. And then it's like, okay, you got Toast. Where's that traffic? It comes into Toast. Are you using Toast Marketing? If you are, how can we use it better? If you're not using Toast Marketing, how can we get that data somewhere else? You're using Ovation. You're using Marquee. All those links. You got a link going back to the website. Why not maybe have that link going to a call to action landing page and you could change it up with the seasons. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of opportunity that I think we're going to be able to look at because some of our clients, unfortunately, when we take them on, they're looking for us to fill a certain void. Yep. When I, I like to say, Hey guys, let us fill every possible void. Trust us. Yep. We're not here to make money tomorrow. I'm here to make money in five years. Yep. You know, Basilio's Pizza up in Minnesota, Connie and Tom, we, they've been a client for three years now. And I want to be a client in three more years. The only way they can be a client in three more years is if where they're, where they're outsourced marketing, like where they're outsourced brain on this stuff. And so that's a key element for me. So that's what I, I look forward to. I think next episode, I think next episode, we're going to actually dig into, yep. it's been a month. We're a month into it. There's a couple things done. There's some things I see I like. There's some things I see I don't like. And then there's what's the next step. So we're going to dig into that. Any closing words for episode one, own their phones? I mean, I think just the most important thing, it, it's the thing I say on all my podcasts, and I'll say it on this one too, and it's, it's stay curious. You wouldn't be listening to this podcast. You wouldn't be consuming this content. If you weren't curious. Yep. You would just scroll past it. You'd say, fuck it, I'm not listening. But then you have to get involved. You actually have to do something about it. Yep. Like, you know, part of what I had to realize is I can't have my media team do all my marketing also. Yeah. And we hit that point where I said, I like what Matt's saying. I like what he's building. Now I need to actually do something about it. And that's the third part is ask for help. So if anything that we talk about, if you have a question about anything, I steal this from Ryan Reynolds, 
who was on Entrepreneur, he did an interview with them, but he said that I'm weirdly available. I'm weirdly available on all platforms. Yeah. Sean at CaliBBQ.media. We live this stuff. We breathe this stuff. We care about this stuff because if you listen to this content, if you consume this content and it makes your restaurant better, that makes a better story. That makes us better because now we're connected. I mean, we have people because of our podcast, because of the content we make. You have people all over the world. We're not talking just about in Kentucky and yep. San Diego. We're talking about friends that we've made on every single continent on earth because of content, because we're willing to share our story. This shit matters. Yep. This shit matters. It's important. We're here for the journey and we want you to be a part of the journey. So interact with us, yep. you know, come along, ask questions and anything we can do to help. We're here. I love it. And the URL, by the time this airs, the URL should be up and rocking. Owntheirphones.com. The goal is going to be to list all of the tech things you're using. Chronicle yep. your restaurant, chronicle ours, the journey. And there's going to be weeks where we go, man, this didn't work. This yep. worked. And the thing I hope people to really take from this is that, you know, I've been doing my marketing plan that I have for my brand and my company. I've been doing it for like six years now. Yep. And, you know, like I've got, I use the example today. I've got two new guys in the last six months on the camera and help me with content, Max and Logan. Like, I didn't hire them and pay them expecting I better see an ROI in three months. It's going to take me, hopefully they stay on the team for three, four, five, ten years. Yep. Look back and go, holy shit, bro. Like those 4,000 videos did this. Yep. And so that's the big, key, big, big element here for me. I got one final question because I'm curious on this. So I've never asked you this. So I would imagine because we met digitally and then I came out to San Diego for traffic and conversions, came by the restaurant, uh, had a great meal, talked. What was it that made you reach out? Because I'm sure there was skepticism there. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you're like, who the hell is this guy in orange? And okay, looks looks okay. But was there anything, was there a feeling out process for you that you kind of vetted me and I didn't know about it or that over a two or three or four month period that something that got your attention that said, hey, this is a, an idea that this guy's legit or I like him? It always, it'll always come back to story. So, you know, what my media mentor, David Meltzer, has taught me when I'm putting out content is the better that you become at telling your story and the story of the clients and the story of your community and the things that you do to impact people. That's how people connect. No one wants to be fucking talked to. Yeah. No one wants to go to a presentation and say, Hey, I'm the best. Like, look at this slide presentation. You know, when I'm going to, I did that a lot these... <laughs> early on, by the way, <laughs> we've all done it. We've yeah. all failed miserably. But once you start talking about stories, stories of your restaurant, stories of your clients, stories of email lists, like, you know, you going on Eric Cacciatore's podcast yeah. and talking about, you know, the owner's email list. You know how many fucking emails I've sent? A guy like me? I've, I mean, I showed you I have 66,000 yeah. photos. Yeah. I have 12,000 videos on my iPhone. I've sent hundreds of thousands of emails. What are they doing? Yeah. Well, we haven't tapped into those yeah. emails. And we're going to come up with a plan and we're going to hold your team accountable. Yeah. I'm going to hold you accountable. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push on you just as much as I'm going to push on our tech partners because... We're all figuring this shit out. Oh, yeah. Nobody's like nobody understands it, and the best people are the ones that are willing to do something really cool. Because we're going to look back and go, twenty twenty two, holy shit, we had no idea. This was just the beginning of the gold rush. So ironically, what attracted me to you was it finally finding a restaurant owner with a podcast, with video storytelling, chronicle the journey, is what attracted you to me. Is that it's all out there. Yep. So I'm glad that you didn't find me five years ago because my content did suck. <laughs> it was me in front of a chart going, look how great we are. Like, this is me. This is me. Uh, now it's more, hey, here's what we do. Yep. And on the openness uh, scale also is I'm similar in nature. My team manages most of my social media, full disclosure. Like, yep. I have people that, hey, I messed you. They'll call me like, hey, great conversation. I it wasn't me. But they manage <laughs> most of it. But I am a, my cell phone where I put it out there. You know, it's 859 743 2408. You know, I don't mind having phone calls. I prefer somebody to text me and say, Hey, Matt, I heard you on this podcast, read your book. Like, it's in my book. Yep. And I would rather have conversations like that because what happens with me is I've got so many channels yep. and I've got so many things that are pulling me. I've kind of, that's why this is called the Deep Work Studios, is I read Cal Newport's book, Deep Work. And one of the things that a deep work was, to pull yourself out of some of the digital universe to really get better at what you do, which is run your business. Yep. So if you want to reach out to me, that's my cell phone number. I love to have a conversation. So that the first episode in the books that's own it. their phones. This will probably be the longest one unless we get really deep into some stuff. But <laughs> the next episode, episode two, we're going to talk about month one of Cali BBQ. Yep. 
working with America's Best Restaurants. We're going to look at the dashboard. We're going to go deeper there. Sounds good. Can't wait. Perfect. Let's do it.